Well, hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the build of the, ooh, the Mini MiG. Uh, really, really cool aircraft. This is the final push on this aircraft and we are trying to get stuff done, trying to wrap this thing up. So anyways, let's continue on, hang tight and we'll get back into this build. All right guys, last video we got uh, the EDF unit mounted, got the nose gear dealt with, we got the batteries, uh, kind of the, the pockets kind of created and stuff. So we've got all the final touches to do on this aircraft. Now, if you remember in the last video, if you watched, uh, we needed somewhere to install the speed control, which is right down there underneath the fan. Um, that's pretty much the only spot we got for it. Now the last video was just released today, so uh, there's been a few comments already that I've read today on this thing. Uh, anyways, that uh, speed control is actually going to get some air movement uh, through it. So what's going to happen is it's right behind the, uh, the servo here for the steering, and that's all wide open. So there's going to be airflow going over it, so I'm not worried about that at all, and it should work out beautifully. One of the other benefits um, to Actually, let's take this a step back. So I glued this last night at the end of last video. That's uh, glued down with shoe goop. And one of the other benefits of this um, fan unit is uh, having to push it back is that now we were able to tape the bottom of the duct to the fan unit. So that's done as well too. Previously, this was not done. So it actually worked out good. Kind of glad that we had to put the ESC underneath here because now this is uh, a nice solid unit and we can flip this uh, EDF unit back over and get it fastened down. Now, we do have the wires to kind of deal with, which is gonna be possibly a bit of a struggle. So we need to get those wires plugged into the speed control first, confirm that we're moving the right direction on those wires, because they're gonna be, I think, a bit of a pain to get to. So that's the first thing I'm gonna deal with is that stuff, and then we'll move on. All right, so quite happy with how all of this came together now. So we've got our fan uh, EDF unit assembled, put back in place, so that's all done. Now, next big challenge is where do we put the receiver? So um, because this receiver has uh, the uh, gyro in it, I, I forget what Spectrum calls it, uh, it needs to be flat and level, right? So uh, the downside is we could probably put it right here on this duct if it was just being used as a receiver, but we wanna be able to use the gyro in there and this would set it at an angle and it's not a solid space. So what do we do? Well, when we take a look at the canopy unit, the cockpit and everything that Joe put together, we have a bunch of space right back behind this area right here. And it's, it's quite a substantial amount of space and I think that's gonna work out perfectly. So what I'm thinking about doing here is basically mounting the receiver right here. Is that ideal? Well, maybe not. Yes, it's close to the EDF unit, but we really don't have any other choices as far as receiver locations go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to probably glue a piece of uh, wood across here and then uh, bolt down a piece of carbon or something like that, uh, maybe just thin plywood, and then we can fasten the receiver down just like that. And that should work beautifully with our setup. We can go backwards a little bit, so there's uh, definitely lots of room, but I think that's going to be the best location for the, uh, the receiver. Now the batteries, we need to make sure we leave enough room for the batteries to come out. So that's uh, basically in this area here. So that's one thing to think about and be mindful of. And uh, the other thing I want to do with uh, the batteries and everything is uh, I've already fired this, uh, this fan unit up to confirm that it's good. But when you put the fan unit on full throttle on a 6S setup, 
the, there's quite a bit of flex in this duct. Now I've read on some of the build threads of people reinforcing this duct, which is what we're gonna do as well too. So we're gonna do it for a couple reasons. Number one, we're gonna do it to support the batteries. And number two, we're gonna do it to support the duct. So that's a couple of the things that we're working on here. Uh, next thing I'm gonna tackle though is the, uh, the receiver location because we need to get that figured out next. All right guys, so accomplished a few things here. Uh, number one, uh, I got high saw all over the, over the wing. That's awesome. So number one, we're going to clean that up. Just comes off with a bit of rubbing alcohol before it's cured. Okay, so number one, um, we got the, what did we do here? Oh yeah, the plate here for mounting the receiver. So I've taken a, a quarter inch piece of, um, this is maple, and sanded down the duct and glued that in place with high saw and then I just used some CA to hold it in place. So now we've got somewhere to install our plate here uh, to put our receiver on. So that's what we did. Um, other thing we did was I forgot that we needed to find a spot for our air cylinder. Now I showed in the previous, one of the previous videos, this is the air cylinder that came with the air up spring down kit. This one is way too big to fit anywhere in this, uh, in this aircraft. So I used a old cylinder from a jet cat turbine that used to hold propane when they used to start them with propane. And it's about this big. And where I put it was it's actually sitting right here. If you look closely, you can see the end of it right there. And this is the four millimeter line that comes off. So it's only, it's about this long. I just used white silicone. Uh, actually was able to, to jam it beside the duct there. There was just enough room and we're siliconing it in place on the side of the fuselage. It weighs almost nothing. So location really doesn't matter. Uh, and then these clamps are here just to the piece of wood that trims out this opening was loose on the back side, so I had some leftover high saw, put that on there, put the clamps on, we're good to go. And one of the last things I did was our wire right here for the rear light, uh, ran that forward and now it's coming out in the wire bundle stuff and uh, that's good to go. All right, so I feel like we are in the home stretch on this plane. We still have lots to do, but uh, feels pretty good. So. Uh, last night I installed, I didn't get the carbon installed on top of the intake, ran out of time. Anyways, we got this piece installed, just installed this plate. Now if you look at the plate, I put it off center. Now the reason I put it off center is so we can get the receiver close to the center, like that. And then we have room for other stuff like the air fill valve here. So uh, this air fill valve uh, the reason I went with this style is because it's really, really short and simple to operate. It's kind of like the robe or the uh, BVM ones where you just put a tube inside there and just pump air in. It's got a little flapper in there, so it's going to work uh, work quite well. Nice and simple to operate, but it, the, the key is low profile. Uh, the Robart ones that I usually use, it wouldn't fit in here because it's there's just not enough room. Uh, it sticks down below the plate about that much, and this one, the air comes right off the side, so that's pretty much perfect. So next thing we can do here is we can start to get uh, our servo leads completed. So what we're going to do for that is we are going to install the receiver and then we are going to start to get our servo leads lined up. We're going to leave a little bit extra kind of floating down there and uh, just so we've got some room in case this needs to move in the future. So I'm going to leave about uh, maybe six inches extra just tucked down there. Uh, nobody will ever notice, but uh, except you and I and everybody who's watching the videos. Um, so yeah, wiring is kind of next. And then we need to start focus on plumbing as well too. So that's gonna be pretty straightforward. What we're using for this kit is a single electronic air valve. Now this would, on a, on a large jet, um, we would typically use this for our uh, wheel brakes because it just pushes air out and then bleeds it off. Well, in the case of these uh, air downs or air up spring downs, they just need air to make them go up. So all we need is a one-way valve. Uh, supply goes on the backside. 
output goes on this side and then that output goes to all the different gear and uh, that's what makes that gear come up. So uh, this needs to be installed. This can be installed pretty much anywhere. We can just tuck that down uh, beside and, and tape it in place wherever uh, kind of fits. Uh, fits well. So anyways guys, that is uh, what we're working on here. Uh, next thing is wiring. I won't show you any details on that other than we're plugging it into the appropriate spots in the receiver. All right, so about an hour later, all of our servo ends except the light ones are installed. So we've got all those ones done, all those guys, and they're all done. So uh, what I did here on the throttle side is we basically had the throttle cable coming from the ESC, the Spectrum ESC. I chopped that off a little bit shorter here. And then we added in a T on the plug that goes into the receiver. And then this is where our afterburner light is gonna plug into. So the afterburner light is this really long light right here. So we're gonna shorten this cable a whole bunch uh, just because it does not need to be that long. And uh, then that gets plugged into here. All of our other ones get plugged into the receiver. I'm hoping we got enough channels. And uh, then we've got our power leads from our afterburner light. And we've got the power lead from the Unilight. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pick up a small two cell LiPo, like tiny little LiPo, thousand milliamp type thing, 800 milliamp. That's gonna sit right in this area here and uh, that's gonna power all the lighting system. I uh, don't wanna run that through the BEC, also supplying power to the receiver. I think that would just be too much. We've got a pretty hefty light system on this little plane and uh, we wanna make sure that that doesn't cause any issues with the rest of the plane. So that's gonna be the safer way to do it. That battery is going to weigh almost nothing. And if we need more nose weight, which is fairly common on this plane, um, we will uh, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we're going with a little bit heftier batteries, but we don't know at this point. So, so that's where we're at. Um, next thing to be done is kind of figure out the lighting system. I think I'm going to mount these controllers right on the underside of this plate. And I think that's just a great place to mount them because... Uh, why not make use of that plate? It's kind of the, the general central equipment plate, which is, uh, is awesome. So uh, next thing to do is figure out that. And then we're gonna power on the system. Probably not tonight, we'll do it tomorrow. And uh, it's getting fairly late already. We're gonna power up the system, plug these things in one at a time, get them programmed and go from there. All right guys, working on a little bit of scattered stuff here, but uh, I pulled the uh, parts that we need for the air system out of my parts box. We're gonna get this hooked up. So we're using a Festo uh, adapter here. So that goes from the four millimeter line, which is hooked up to our airline because that's the size that the airline or the, the air cylinder needed. So we're gonna step that down from four millimeter to three millimeter. And then we are going to go into a T and that T is gonna to go to two different things. So that T is gonna go, number one, our tank is gonna come on this side the top one, doesn't really matter, but the top one is gonna to go to our fill valve. And then this one is gonna to go to our red valve that is going to cycle all the gear. So that's how we're organizing this thing. And I'm just gonna get these things plumbed up because we're kind of in that, uh, that area where we need it uh, to get plumbed need access and all that kind of stuff. So anyways, we're gonna get this little portion done and then we're gonna get into the, the wiring and the setup and everything. All right, so we are starting to plug things in here. Uh, you can see where I mounted the electric valve. Uh, it actually worked out perfect. I was thinking I would have to put it somewhere down here. Problem is then getting the air, air lines and stuff all over and uh, just worked out perfectly there. So the air in comes on this side, the out comes on this side, goes to a four-way, or there's a, a four-way splitter basically, and then it goes to all the gear. So pretty straightforward. What we're doing now is we're plugging in the all the, the leads. Now, in order to get enough channels, we're gonna to have to pair up the rudder and the nose wheel, which is going to work out fine, I think. So I've plugged the nose wheel into the rudder channel, trimmed it out, and uh, there we go. We got uh, 
lots of good steering. So what we're doing in this case basically is I'm trimming out the nose wheel to be center. And then when we plug the rudder in, we'll just center the rudder when we fasten down the fastening system here. So pretty simple setup. And uh, fortunately the rudder and the nose wheel servos go the same direction. So I've already got the rudder set up before and uh, I just plugged in the nose wheel to test and it's moving the correct direction. So that is perfect. So we're gonna continue plugging this stuff in. I do need to make a Y for that rudder right now as well too. So I'm gonna get that done before we go any further. Uh, all right, so we got everything plugged in. I just thought I'd show you guys how many cycles we get on this, uh, this gear out of those little, uh, that little air cylinder, it's pretty awesome. I've, so far I think we get eight. So I just filled it up to 100 PSI. We'll do gear cycles here. So we got one, Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh yeah, about eight. <laughs> That's pretty impressive. Pretty awesome. So anyways, we got everything plugged in now as far as surfaces go. So it's time to do, uh, to do setup and programming. So first thing we're gonna do on these surfaces is we are basically centering them with our fastening set up here to make sure that we get it all centered as they're all loose right now, right? So that's the first thing we'll go through and center all these uh, surfaces. So first thing we're gonna do on these surfaces is we are basically centering them with our fastening set up here to make sure that we get it all centered as they're all loose right now, right? So. That's the first thing we'll go through and center all these uh, surfaces. All right, so we have all of our programming done, or at least the servos are all set up and ready to go. Uh, pretty straightforward on everything. Um, there's no uh, throws listed in the manual. So all I did was uh, put the throws where I think they're, uh, they're appropriate. I'll show you guys those as we get into the final stages of this plane. But uh, so all of our servos are now plugged in to the receiver. Uh, we basically have our light set up to wire and a couple little things to do here as well too. Like we're gonna put these cover plates on and uh, she's getting really close. Not very sure on how I'm gonna finish this uh, pipe on the end here. I think what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna take a piece of this material and test how well shoe goop uh, bonds to it. And if it bonds well, then I'll probably end up putting some shoe goop around here and then clamping it so it follows the profile of the, the back end of this plane. And then if we ever need to get the pipe out, the shoe goop, uh, you can just pop it loose. But uh, we need to test and make sure it's actually gonna stick to that plastic. So anyways, guys, lots of great progress on this thing. So just baby steps left. All right, guys, so last step here is the lighting system installation and the final wiring. So I was thinking about this overnight and basically uh, initially I was going to put it underneath like this. Problem is we don't then have access to the programming button. Um, I guess realistically I could put it on top like that uh, and that would be okay as well. But uh, what I was thinking about just to save room here is glue the controller onto the bottom uh, like this, and then we still have access to that. And then our uh, controller for the afterburner setup, we're gonna put that right in this area here. So what I'm gonna do as a first step is I'm going to wire these guys together for the, the power leads for the lighting system, put an extension on it that reaches to the front here because we're gonna to have to put our little lipo that we're gonna pick up right in this area. Uh, it's kind of the only place we have for room left, but uh, that should work out well if it's sitting right in that location. So not much to do left, guys. We are making some awesome progress. All right, guys, so we've got all the wiring basically done at this point. Um, I've just got my cable here for the lighting system coming forward. It's excessively long and we've just got it plugged into a, a random battery there. So anyways, um, yeah, so she's looking awesome. All the surfaces are working good. Uh, the light system here, so we've got our green light on the that side. 
the white one on the back, which is on the slow beacon mode. So it's kind of cool looking. And we've got the red one on that side. Nice little Unilights. Those things are really slick. Really awesome. Uh, awesome setup for sure. Okay, so next thing to do is... Uh, yeah, so that's done. We're kind of just into the final programming at this point. So basically what we need to do now is uh, kind of get, uh, get it ready to fly. So we could do the AS3X setup on the Spectrum. Um, so that hasn't been done yet. Uh, I need to go in to the ESC and figure out how we can adjust the voltage because I'd like to make sure that we're running at uh, uh, high voltage setup, so 8.4, 8 volts kind of thing. And uh, just do those small adjustments, but uh, at this point, that's pretty much her. Okay, so one of the things that I wanted to do is I wanted to change the RX voltage from 6 volts to 8.5, which I have successfully done. Now this is coming from the Avian ESC into the smart receiver. And I tried to do this with the programming, the audio programming and the throttle stick, but it was not working. Yes, I tried to watch a bunch of YouTube videos. So then what I did is I went into the smart ESC menu and figured out by watching YouTube videos how to make this work. Now, a couple of the things that they talked about on there is making sure that you actually have full uh, travel on your sticks. So if you've already set up dual rates and stuff, uh, on aileron and elevator, you will not have full travel because that's how you enter that menu is holding your stick down. So keep that in mind. I'm not a huge fan of Spectrum to begin with, but just thought I'd throw that out there to help you guys out if you're, uh, if you're struggling with this radio. So you got to make sure that you're getting 100%, 100%. So I went in and I turned my, uh, my, and I'm not using dual rates to have dual rates. I'm just using it for, uh, for expo and stuff like that. So I, I put it on a switch so I can get more travel um, and turn the dual rates off nice and easy. So anyways, to enter the Smart ESC mode, you basically essentially don't worry about the other stuff. You're holding up elevator and left elevator. So you're holding that stick position for about five to 10 seconds. Then the screen changes and you hold up and right. Then the screen changes and it goes into your actual settings, all of these guys here. And you just use the uh, up and down elevator to move through the settings and right and left to change the settings. And you go all the way to the very bottom and you hit the exit slash save menu. Yes, that may sound confusing, but uh, it's actually kind of a nice way to program it. I just wish that you didn't have to get that 100%, 100% because if your surfaces won't allow you to get that travel, then you're gonna to have to dig into your plane and unplug your surfaces because that is, uh, could be a bit of an issue. So anyways, now we've changed the voltage on the uh, BEC to be at 8.4 volts or uh, normal LiPo volts. And the reason I wanted to do that is to make sure the servos had the, the most amount of power possible. And uh, you know, some of these sur surfaces like these flaps, there's a little bit of resistance when they're closing all the way. So I just wanna make sure the servos have the most amount of power. That's the reason I wanted to do that. So now we're, uh, we're all good. You can see full travel there. That's 100% on everything. And then I just flick my switch and now we're back to normal travel. So anyways, I'm gonna go back in the radio and change that stuff on. There we go. So now my switch doesn't do anything and we've got our, uh, our dual rates set up there for uh, our different surfaces. So we're back to good. Uh, next thing I was doing was playing with the gyro setup. So that's forward programming, gyro settings. So we got that kind of set up. Uh, AS3X settings. So what I did with the AX3S settings was I went in and made a flight mode and the reason I made a flight mode is so we could have different gains on all the different flight modes. And I did add a heading mode as well too. So when my sticks all the way back towards me, we've got 20% heading gain on there as well too. Now what the heading gain does 
is it doesn't correct. Oh, and we haven't gone over 25% throttle yet. Okay, so now we should be able to get into forward programming. Okay, so heading, we've got an, an additional or 20% heading gain. I don't really know what that uh, determines, but when we add heading gain, that changes how the surfaces react. So heading, when you're on the normal gyro setting and you lift this wing, the surface will move and then reset. Okay, when you're on heading mode, the surface will continue moving until you bring the surface back to where it was, or if you lift the surface up and then move the aileron stick, then it resets. So your heading gain is only active, I think, when your stick is at neutral, which is pretty standard with most gyro setups. So the reason I wanted to add the heading gain on there was more or less just to have a different option to try out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna program three different flight modes. Number one is gonna be 0% gain. Number, and that's gonna be all the way forward just for the initial flights. Uh, you never put uh, heading gain on your rudder. So it's just, in Spectrum's case, it's the pitch and roll axis, not yaw, which is uh, your tail. So keep that in mind as well too. So we're gonna do uh, number one, which is off. Okay, so that's gonna be all the way forward is off. Number two, no heading gain, but we're gonna have our gains in there. And then number three, we have our gains plus our heading gain. So when I go into flight mode one, we've got nothing. When I go into flight mode two, surface is moving and it's moving the correct direction. We'll lift the tail. And those are moving the correct direction, they're moving up. So you always want your gyro to be moving the direction you move the surface. So if you lift the wing, your surface should go up. If you lift that wing, your surface should go up. If you lift your elevator, the surface should go up. If you move your rudder standing behind the plane this way, the rudder should move towards the direction of the movement. So we're all good there. And uh, what we're gonna do is back out of the menu here, go back to the main menu, and we're good to go. All right guys, and like always, I know you appreciate this, or at least people tell me they do. I'm gonna share my successes and failures with you as well too. So let's talk about some failures on this aircraft, this little MiG. So generally when your aircraft is just sitting around and you're doing programming, it's always good to have your flaps in the middle position. Uh, they're gonna have their most, generally, they're gonna have their most resistance when they're in the up position or the zero flaps position. And in this case, with those um, CA hinges and the positioning of it, there's, if you look here, there's a little bit of resistance to get that to close all the way. So while I was sitting here programming this plane, uh, it's been on for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. There's no air over the surfaces. I had the flaps in the off position and unfortunately I think I burned out the flap servos. So we'll need to get another pair of servos as well for the flaps on this plane. Unfortunately, stuff like that happens. A couple positive things that I figured out. So the uh, RC Geek Lite, the controller here, I tried running it off of a Y cable from the throttle. Now the problem with doing that is the something to do with the signal. Uh, this controller does not like uh, being on a Y with the smart ESCs. Does not work, I tried just the signal cable and stuff, doesn't work. Anyway, so what I did was I paired up the ailerons. The ailerons work fine uh, paired up, that's no problem. We have to change the gyro a little bit. But uh, so now the rudder and nose are on one channel. The ailerons are on one channel. And what that allowed us to do is open up channel number six here. And we've got the, this is set as a, as a throttle channel. And we've got the uh, controller going into number six now. So now controller works, the afterburner works. It's very impressive. 
and uh, makes a, a pretty cool effect on this plane. So, all right guys, so before we call it quits tonight, we're going to reinforce the battery intake area. So what we're doing is I've got some really heavy carbon cloth here and uh, basically I'm, I'm just getting this covered with West Systems Epoxy and I figured I would show you guys how to do this. So this will officially be this episode's tip time which is brought to you by trusty bent screwdriver. I find when you're dealing with stuff like this, it'd be really hard to actually get down there to install uh, epoxy on the side of the uh, the intake. So what I do is just lay down a piece of plastic, plastic bag in this case, and uh, using West Systems epoxy, and basically we just completely saturate the cloth with epoxy. And now what we can do is we can peel this up, and this first piece we're laying it across the back side here, and then what we'll do is we'll lay another piece this way all the way to the front, but I wanna get the sides uh, reinforced as much as possible because this duct, when you fire the EDF unit up, you can see this whole thing compressing, uh, squeezing in. So it's uh, pretty pretty impressive how much force is in this intake duct, uh, negative pressure wise. So anyways, that's this episode's version of tip time or tip time and uh, let's get this piece installed. All right guys, so as I talked about, I put a piece across this area, basically in front of the former work right there. And then we put a long piece going all the way to the nose. And then I added another piece across here, right in front of that former. And uh, so that's our carbon reinforcement. And uh, we're gonna let that cure obviously overnight. So we're basically done for tonight. We're almost done this plane, as I've mentioned, but uh, now that we've got the afterburner figured out, uh, that's a step in the right direction, which is, uh, is good. We'll check back with that tomorrow and see how it looks. Okay guys, so MIG is about as complete as we can do. I've gone in and because we changed those aileron setups, I had to uh, just relearn the servo outputs for the gyro, so now it knows again uh, that it's got one aileron output. And uh, now the gyro is all working like it's supposed to. So next things we're working on is we've got to get replacement flap servos. Uh, I tried to turn those on again and uh, obviously they're, they're burnt out. So we need to uh, get some of those. And uh, what we're gonna do in the meantime is kind of start working on the finishing touches for this aircraft. So next thing I'm, I'm doing here because this thing is upside down is we are going to finish off the, uh, the gear wells here and cover up all the foam with some epoxy. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some uh, probably some 30 minute finishing epoxy, not the West System stuff because we don't need as much as, uh, as comes out in one pump and uh, we're gonna mix some material in with it and we're going to basically coat these wells with uh, finishing epoxy. And we're gonna do that on both sides and that's gonna clean those up nicely and allow this to get painted and have the paint stick really well to, uh, to what's on there. So I'll get that mixed up and I'll show you guys what we're doing. Okay, so I uh, started putting some of this on the foam and I'm like, hey, maybe I should share this with you guys. So we've mixed up some 30 minute finishing epoxy resin with uh, quite a bit of micro balloons. So it's almost like a really thick paste. Anyways, what this is doing is it's filling in the foam, creating kind of a hard protective layer as well too. And it will give a nice surface to to paint to. Other nice thing about using the epoxy is when you put it on like this um, with a brush, it lays down because it's still quite um, moldable and liquid, right? It's not like you're putting a paste on and it's gonna hold that shape. So when you brush it on like this, it lays down nicely and creates a nice smooth surface that will be good to paint. So that's basically what we're doing to both sides. Again, just protecting the foam, uh, essentially getting all the foam coated in this material. All right, so on the little MIG, we filled in the wheel wells with that mixture, both are done. Uh, we did a little bit of uh, modeling. It's gonna be hard to see with that light, but we use the, uh, 
the mixture there as well too to cover up the rest of the LED light. And the other thing we've done is we've added another light on top here and uh, it's kind of nice because it's got that strobe pattern so it's a little bit different than the, uh, than the tail light which is blinking fast. So just a cool little effect. We had it and uh, why not add it? So anyways, that's added. Uh, pretty simple, we just use CA to hold it in place. Man, I've got spots in my eyes now and uh, worked out really good. So anyways, that portion is done. Uh, next thing, oh, and I also filled in this little spot here where we kind of melted through the, the covering, uh, trying to get that paint to, uh, to sit down, so. We've got the, uh, the centerpiece to glue in place, the intake splitter, I think, like this. So we're gonna glue that in place. Probably gonna use high saw. I mean, this is a pretty important piece. We don't want that getting sucked into that fan. Uh, that would be a, a bad, bad day. But uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna glue this in uh, probably until we are have those batteries installed. Reason for that is I may need to heat this up a little bit more still to, uh, to allow this uh, to flex enough to get those batteries installed. One of the downsides with adding all this carbon is this is like insanely stiff now on this intake. So yeah, I think I'm gonna wait for the splitter and we'll do that kind of as a final step. That doesn't really impede our uh, painting process, because we need to repaint the entire plain silver. This will be one of the last things we do. We're gonna paint this intake chrome uh, to match the uh, larger plane that Eric's got en route, the larger MIG, but uh, she's coming together nicely. All right, guys, doing the refinement on this uh, little MIG now, and uh, one of the things we're adding to the plane is a latch on the back of the hatch. And uh, reason for that is currently it's using magnets. So there is, I think, three magnets or maybe two magnets right here. And uh, that is what's keeping the back hatch on. Problem with that, this thing is gonna be motoring pretty quick. And this, uh, this front section here, there's gonna be quite a bit of air force on that. So what can happen is that canopy can just slide right up. Uh, I've taken it while it's on and just pushed it back and it just slipped right up. So don't really want to lose a canopy. So what we're doing is we're as adding a physical hatch. So this is what you would generally see on a turbine aircraft where the front clips in like this. And we'll just get that out of the way. But uh, you basically pull it back, it pops into a hole. So I've gotten everything lined up to this point. So what I did was just do some rough calculations. Uh, I've got a BVM uh, hatch thing here, um, hatch latch, and uh, that's what we're using on this. So first thing I did was drill this front hole. I just kind of sized it up like this, and then I sat this where I wanted it to and figured out where our little dimension was there. Then I used my drill bit, drill front hole, back hole, and used an X-Acto knife and just very, very carefully cut that out. Could have used a Dremel or lots of different tools, but I just kept it simple. So now what we need to do is we need to glue this latch on, and we're probably just gonna use, I think, shoe goop for that, because this is a full polycarbonate um, canopy here, so the whole thing's polycarbonate, and I think that should work good if uh, we just use shoe goop and um, yeah, so we'll get this glued in place, pretty straightforward, just get it nice and centered. And then when this is cured, what you do is you can uh, make a finer point on here if it doesn't show up, but you basically pull this back, um, get the canopy in place nice and centered. And then I find if you just extend that, give it a little bit of a, a push and a wiggle, there'll be enough of a mark so when you drill a hole through here, uh, it lines up perfectly. So, but that's the next step after we get this piece glued in. So I'm gonna get that glued in and we will, uh, the next step after that will be installation. All right guys, so we got this all taken care of yesterday. So I shoe gooped this yesterday. You can see there and it's all dry and, and, uh, and cured now. 
So what I did to get the hole on the fuselage is as follows. So I took a little bit, or I took a paint marker. You may be able to see it there, but there's a yellow, uh, there's a bit of yellow on the end of the pin. Anyways, take a little bit of paint marker, put it on there as heavy as you can. And then what you do is you install the canopy, holding that pin back, get it nice and centered, and then just mark it. So push it against the, the fuselage a few times. And then when you take this off, there was a little tiny paint mark there. What I do when I do this is I start below the paint mark. Uh, if you start at the paint mark or above the paint mark, what happens is that hole's probably in the right spot left to right, but you want it to be nice and tight. So there's a little bit of play side to side, but up and down, we are tight, tight. So I start below my mark, try it to fit it, test fit it, and then I slowly increase the size and height of that, uh, that hole. So now with that pin, our canopy will absolutely not come off and uh, much more reliable than just those magnets. Um, the back hatch here is held on by magnets. And what I'll probably do once we're, uh, once we're done and ready to paint is I'm going to um, just put a couple drops of, of shoe goop on there, stick it in place. And then if this needs to come off, it can be pried off fairly easy, but there's really no reason to make hatch latches or anything like that, nor do we wanna make that permanent so it's never possible to remove it. All right, guys, and getting back to our tests that we did on the uh, exhaust or uh, thrust tube, um, I also tried weld on um, acrylic glue and that didn't work overly well either. So you can see here, it just peels right off. The best thing actually was, uh, was the shoe goop, which is right here. And uh, it is possible to peel it off but it takes a fair bit of work, so it's, it's holding on to this material like it would normally do. So we're gonna use shoe goop on the tail. So now that we've got our light installed, our install's pretty much done, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shoe goop this thing and, uh, and get it finally set in place. So, all right guys, and there's a shot of the pipe. Uh, shoe gooped in place. So we just used standard goop, the clear version. And I did not put the pipe all the way down to the bottom. Now I tried clamping it in place, starting on the bottom and then working my way around the top. Problem is that that spreads out the pipe too much and causes a deformation kind of halfway down the, uh, the pipe. So uh, left the bottom open a little bit because this fuselage has a bit of a droop down there, which is totally fine. That adds a nice little touch um, to form the, to follow the form on the top section there. So obviously we've clamped this in place, just letting it, uh, letting it cure. And just wanna give a shout out to each and every one of you that have donated to the Shop Build Fund. As your name scroll across the screen here, some of you have donated big donations, some small donations, and uh, everyone helps and is very, very useful. So thank you guys for your donations. It is very appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now I know a very common question with my builds is how long does it take? So what I've, what I've generally tried to do is keep track of hours during all these builds, just so you guys have an idea. Uh, but I don't usually uh, charge hourly. It's all based on um, usually an upfront price. But anyways, uh, time to build the MIG was exactly 40 hours. And that does not include the painting yet, obviously. Uh, the painting we will uh, be tackling. It should be a fairly quick paint job because it's pretty straightforward, but uh, that'll be over and above that 40 hour uh, period. And uh, anyways, that's how long it took to build the MIG. All right guys, and the little MIG is basically wrapped up. We still do have some things to take care of. We need to number one, replace those flap servos. Um, it's holiday, Labor Day here in Canada, and I think down in the US it's the same thing. So we need to uh, get the servos dealt with. 
Uh, we're still waiting on batteries. They're supposed to be here hopefully by this coming Friday. If they're here by Friday, then we'll get to Made in the Plane. Um, so we got to deal with flap servos, batteries, and then we got to paint this thing as well too. So um, I don't know how much of that portion we're going to video. Uh, I might just do a bit of a summary on the Maiden of this plane, and then we'll do the Maiden flight. So we'll see how it goes. There might be one more video uh, on the painting portion. Uh, if not, there'll be the Maiden flight coming up as well. So um, anyways, that's it for this MIG build. Uh, it's going to be a pretty sweet little flyer. Looking forward to it. Oh, I did weigh it yesterday as well too. So in its current format, without any batteries installed, it is, uh, I think it was 6.47 pounds. Um, batteries, I don't know how much they're going to weigh offhand, but uh, that's what the aircraft as it sits right now comes in at. Not a, not a huge EDF guy, so I don't know if that's heavy. If it's light, I'm not sure what it is. So anyways, guys, it's been a fun project working on this. Eric, congratulations. This is gonna be a wicked little flyer for you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to flying this thing and getting it set up. It's gonna be tons of fun. So stay tuned for that, guys. Thanks for watching the videos. Thanks for supporting the channel. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. We're getting really close to 25,000 subscribers, which is pretty mind blowing for me and uh, it's pretty crazy. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.